Hey guys, Ryan here. I just wanted to give a quick little life update. So this video was supposed to be posted on Monday after the third Prospects Challenge game. However, it did have a little bit of a life issue with my dog. Threw up some blood, had to take him to the emergency vet. Everything is fine, no need to worry. Um, so here's a picture of my dog and I, and now let's get into the video. Hey guys, Wannabe Ryan here with Wannabe Media, and today I'm gonna go over the Boston Bruins Prospect Challenge that happened over this weekend. So starting off, I figured there was a couple different ways that I could go about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my three stars of the tournament, followed up by just some of the more uh, higher end named prospects that I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, and just letting you know how I thought they went. So starting off, number one for me is John Farinacci. Now, John Farinacci obviously just signed out of Harvard this year. First prospect camp for him for the Boston Bruins. For me, I thought his game was well. He didn't do anything good. He didn't do anything bad which for me, that was more of the bigger thing was just kind of see if he had turnovers, you know, where his positioning was on the ice, his ability to make plays. It all seemed like it was there. He just wasn't able to capitalize on it. He did have some smarter, smarter decisions. He was played in the top six mostly throughout the tournament. So definitely given an opportunity to show his game. But like I said, just wasn't too noticeable, didn't do anything bad, but, you know, didn't do anything that really was eye-popping as well. I'm expecting him to have more of those kind of eye-popping plays more in Providence. Once he kind of learns more how to become a pro, we'll see more of John Farinacci later on down the line. Now, another player for me was Luke Toporowski. Now, obviously, Luke Toporowski did have two goals in the opening game. At first, it kind of looked like he was almost like he was too good for the tournament. Um, at 22 years of age, obviously, he still does qualify to come and play, but it's not his first prospect challenge. He did light the lamp the, fir the first game, and then surprisingly he was scratched for the second, which I didn't really understand why. I guess they wanted to get more looks at the uh, invitations to the camp. Like I said, he, he looked really good that first game. You know, he did score two goals. I'm really excited about Toporowski. He had a good year last year in Providence. He didn't play too many games. He did get hurt, but still had 14 goals, 15 assists. He looks good. Smaller height, but he doesn't play like it. He has a bigger frame to him. Um, definitely would be a fan favorite on that fourth line, even third line, if we can get him in there. I expect him to see him some games in Boston this year, but like I said, he had a good tournament in the first game, second game, didn't play, so that's why he can't be one of the three stars. Another player for me that was just kind of interesting was Freddie Brune. Now, obviously, Freddie Brune um, had a great year last year in the Quebec Major Junior League, signing into Providence. He got into a couple games last season. I expect him to probably sign his ELC in the upcoming weeks. I, I think the Bruins are high on him. Plus, they, they really got to start hitting on some of these prospects as the decor is not getting any younger. They don't know what they're going to do with Grizzlick. And Bruins are, are pretty quick at developing defensemen. If you look over the past 10 years, Tory Krug was pretty quick. Kevin Miller, Charlie McAvoy, Carlo, Grizzlick. They are pretty quick at turning out some real talent. So let's just kind of keep an eye on him just to see if they are going to develop him. That's why I do think he's going to get signed. Not saying that Brune is as talented as those players, but he needs to start playing in Providence as he is definitely too good for the Quebec Major Junior League. He didn't have any real talented plays. He kind of reminded me of Tory Krug a little bit in the sense of very offensive minded, but at the same time that can hurt you. He's too offensive minded to where, you know, he's starting to kind of forget that he he has a deep partner and then all of a sudden it's a two on one breakaway and he's back in the offensive zone looking at the play develop behind him instead of in front of him. He is good on the power play. I'll absolutely give him that, you know, could potentially be an NHL power play uh, quarterback. Um, I do think a year in Providence would definitely give him well. He's pro probably a couple of years away, even though he is, he's still young. One cool thing about Freddie Brunet, I know it was talked about when he was drafted, but you know, he does work out with at the same gym as Patrice Bergeron back in Quebec. So curious to see if, you know, Patrice Bergeron kind of takes him under his wing. I, I'm assuming he is just because Patrice Bergeron is literally Jesus Christ reincarnated. So I'm sure there'll, there'll be a relationship there. And as you can see, it got brighter because we talked about Patrice Bergeron and like I said, God-like, he turns the light on in the house. But just to kind of finish off about Freddie Brunet, I do think he is, you know, a couple years away, but Bruins do have a good development system with the defenseman, so I'm not too worried about him. Even if he does play in the NHL, he was a later round pick, so whatever happens with him happens. It's all in Freddie Brunet's hand. Next player that I want to kind of quickly go over is Ryan Mast. Ryan Mast, for me, I just didn't really... Ryan Mast, ever since he was drafted, I think the Bruins are very high on him. I don't really see, I don't want to kind of take away from low quality Bruins fans opinion of him, but him and I do kind of share the same 
thought process that, you know, he's a huge project. I don't really see it working out too well with him. He just has a lot that he does need to work on versus what he already brings to the table. First game, he looked absolutely out of place, almost embarrassing to watch. As the tournament rolled on, though, he did look more comfortable and he did look like he was a much better player. He already signed his ELC. He signed it very early. So I'm assuming that he's going to play in Providence now that he is 20 years old. Kind of thing with Ryan Mass that I do want to talk about. You know, he does kind of share the same similarities as Brandon Carlo in the sense of like the point totals, which I know as a defenseman is just kind of a bonus, especially when you play more of a defensive game. His past two seasons in Sarnia, Ryan Mast had 29 points and then he had 30 points. So again, he just kind of, you know, you score a little bit more in the OHL than you do other leagues. He, he does just kind of favor right around 29, uh, 30 points. I'm assuming once he gets to Providence, he'll be in that 15 to 20 point range. But like I said, defensive defenseman, if he can add in the point totals, that'd be great. But you know, it's not something that they're looking towards. And what I mean by that is Brandon Carlo is typically in the teens when it comes to his NHL points, you know, somewhere between 14 and 19. Obviously last year, was a bit inflated, but I think everybody's totals was because, you know, that team was a legit, true human god squad. All right, now second to last player before we do get into our three stars of the tournament is going to be for me, you know, starting to become almost my favorite player at this point. Just someone that I just absolutely want to get behind and cheer off until the wheels fall off is Johnny Beecher. Now, Johnny Beecher didn't really have the best camp as far as point wise. You know, he just Kind of looked a very passive, like he didn't want the puck as soon as it was on his stick. He was like, ooh, get this the fuck off me, almost like he's playing hot potato with himself. Didn't like that to see from him, but at the same time, the speed was there. The defensive zone recovery was there. The D zone was all great. So, you know, the kind of things that I was preaching about in the previous video all stayed true in the prospects challenge, which if it wasn't, would have been a huge red flag because it was the prospect challenge versus, you know, preseason and actual NHL games. The things that I do think he can capitalize in the NHL showed true in the prospect challenge. It's just, we got to get him more comfortable in the offensive zone. He talks about that in the offseason, he works on his shot. He works in the offensive zone, you know, making plays, getting creative, getting more comfortable. I don't know how much longer it's going to take for him to get comfortable. As an offensive player, you know, he should already be comfortable a little bit in that zone. He just, like I said, very hot potato with the puck. But, you know, sometimes hot potato can be good if you have good hands for it, you know, a la David Krejci, Mark Savard years ago. It can work in your favor, but not not when you have hands of stone like Johnny Beecher. It's just hold on to it, figure out something. He made some plays kind of happen. Nothing, you know, like I said, point totals really weren't there. So as far as like picking up on those plays and actually getting rewarded for them with points, that didn't happen too much. But as far as like the creativity, it was there at times, but just not consistent enough for him to be a third star. But he didn't have a bad camp, which is, I guess, a positive thing. Because we're positive about Johnny Beecher, and that's the guy we're rooting for. So, good camp, Johnny. The last player that I want to talk about, and he was very close to making one of the three stars of the tournament, Georgi Merkulov. Now, Georgi Merkulov absolutely just continues to work, just continues to just put his head down and grind his way to the NHL. He will not take no for an answer. He wants to be in the NHL. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, okay, this guy, how is a guy like this not making your three stars? Well, he didn't necessarily put up a lot of points, and these guys in front of him, I think, just exceeded their expectations so much in the camp that a guy like Georgi Merkulov, who already had expectations, you know, at a high rate, just kind of falls out of it for me. I'm more excited to see what Merkulov does in preseason than he does a prospect camp. You know, last year, first year in Providence, made the all AHL rookie team. I believe he led the AHL in, in rookie points, almost had 30 goals, unbelievable season from him. You know, so I know he can score. I know he can do that. He did work in the defensive zone. I can tell already just because of, you know, the way the tournament went. Didn't really make too many stupid plays to where it's like, okay, Georgie, I know you're going to, you can give us a goal to kind of make up for the one that you just practically let in. But at the same time, you know, he just, he looks more comfortable in the defensive zone, which is good. He's starting to look more comfortable in the neutral zone, which is good. And obviously his offensive zone is his bread and butter. That's just where he loves to make magic happen. And, you know, he does. He's very good at creating plays, not only for himself, but for his teammates. Very good at, you know, everywhere in the offensive zone. It doesn't matter if he's covering for somebody at the high point, low point. He doesn't mind getting in front of the net. Doesn't mind working in the corners. Like I said, he's just very grinding. He will do whatever it takes to get to the NHL. You can tell he doesn't want to stay in the AHL. You can tell he doesn't want to go back to Russia when his ELC ends. You know, he, he, he's all in on making the NHL and players like that you absolutely have to root for and you just have to hope they can figure out what else they can do to make it to the NHL. And before we get into our three stars of the tournament, I just want to talk about the most disappointing player of the entire tournament is Mason Lorai. Mason Lorai for me was very disappointing. 
Last year, once he was done at Ohio State University, you know, signed to play in Providence, looked okay in Providence, you know, but came into this tournament and he just looked out of place. Mason just looked like he kind of, not that he didn't want to be there, but just looked very disinterested on the ice. He didn't seem like really wanted to be there. He like almost like I'm too good for this, which is not a mentality. I really hope that I'm wrong in that sense. I'd rather him be hung over than have the mentality that I shouldn't be here. Because, you know, he is somebody that's always had to work, you know, drafted at 19 instead of 18 like most players. After becoming drafted and everyone was like, man, what a reach by Don Sweeney yet again. Becomes a defensive player of the year in the USAHL. And after that, has two couple stellar years at Ohio State. Signs on to Boston and he looked good in Providence. So I was really thinking that he was going to be overproductive in this camp. And just look like he's ready for preseason. Ready to make a push. Ready to make Derek Forbort go somewhere else. And he just didn't have it this camp. He wasn't horrible. He wasn't bad in his own zone. He just didn't dominate like we thought he would. And for me, that's disappointing. I expected him to come in and absolutely dominate in the offensive zone. You're lucky to make it into the O zone on their side because he's just going to delete you if he does. He just kind of looks lackadaisical out there. It didn't look like he cared, which is, like I said, very disappointing for me. I hope he turns it around. He'll obviously be there in preseason. The Bruins are very high on him. Going forward, I just hope that he has a better mentality and a much better game. He looked better in the second game than he did the first game. I will give him that. So kind of like Ryan Mast improved with each game. At the same time, Mason Lori should just already be that good because, again, didn't look out of place in Providence last season, the couple games that he did get in. So this prospect challenge should have been no sweat to him, and it definitely was. All right, starting off with my three stars. Coming in at number three for me, Jackson Edward. Now, Jackson Edward just, for me, continues to impress and continues to grind and grow. Jackson Edward was drafted in the seventh round, 200th overall, just a couple seasons ago. He made it known at the draft that he was... Grew up a Bruins fan, loves Zidane O'Chara, loves Brad Marchand, loves that physicality, that, that Bruins-style hockey. And that obviously was a huge uh, light bulb for the Bruins fans, you know, just to kind of be like, oh, okay, like, you know, now we got someone that we can root for. Plus, I mean, Jack Edwards, Jackson Edward, you got to love that. He had a sneaky improvement year last year from going in his second year in the OHL. His first, what was supposed to be his first season in the OHL got taken away because of covid his first year, he only had six points, 51 penalty minutes, and it, I was surprised that he even got drafted when I looked at the numbers. But last season, five goals, 20 assists, and get this, folks, 110 penalty minutes. He doubled his penalty minutes. You know, he more almost more than quadrupled his uh, assist totals, and then he got five goals on top of it. He was very pivotal for the London Knights in their playoff run of the OHL. He just continues to impress. Even in this camp, he was on the first pair with Mason Lorai for the second game and didn't look out of place. And if anything, he helped carry him. He, there was a couple plays that I am going to show you. I could screen record for the first two games. Actually, the first game, I didn't realize that I could screen record because I'm not too tech savvy. So by the third period, you know, my girlfriend was like, well, you know, or girlfriend producer whatever you want to call her but um you know I was she was like why aren't you screen recording and I was like damn that's a good idea so the second game I made sure to do it and then my third game because you know obviously no one's going to be at work at 10 a.m on a Monday so you know wasn't really able to screen record it but just absolutely just continues to impress I think he's about to go into another season in the OHL and if he continues just to have a sneaky year in, in the OHL and just continue to grow, look for him to sign his ELC next season and then look for him to play in Providence for a couple of games. I don't know if it's the spark of being drafted by the Boston Bruins, wanting to make the NHL, just wanting to improve, wanting to be a professional hockey player, but he just continues to look better. He's only 19 years of age. He turns 20 in February. He's a defensive defenseman, 110 penalty minutes last year. One of the great things that describes him, if you go to Elite Prospects, which is the best place to look up these prospects, you know, as far as statistics, to kind of a little bit of read about what scouts think of him. In his bio, it calls him violent. Like, what kind of t hockey player in 2023 has a description of violent? I mean, like, as a Bruins fan, I absolutely want this guy on the ice. I don't know if he's going to take off his skate and just start mauling people or if he's going to actually play the game. Either one, I'm down to watch. All in on Jackson, Edward, third star of the camp. Kudos to him. Let's get into number two. All right, now your second star of the tournament for me is no-brainer, Fabian Lysel. Fabian Lysel, for me, I think this is going to be his camp, his, you know, not just prospect camp, but preseason. This is going to be his time to shine to see what he does. Last season, I'll be honest, and he'll probably be the first person to tell you because Fabian is very hard on himself. 
that it was a disappointing season, right? He didn't have put up the points that he wanted to in Providence. Still put up some pretty good numbers in Providence, but he did play a lot of hockey last season and 54 games with Providence Bruins. He had 14 goals, 23 assists, which you know doesn't scream sex. He did have a big concussion, um, which kind of just knocks you out, which can well, obviously a concussion knocks you out, Ryan. As far as like that mentality like concussions aren't easy on anybody and i'm sure that i believe that's his first one that he's probably had i'm sure he's got hit you know playing in sweden but just as far as like a, a record one that, that was it you know he had two tournaments in sweden so just a lot of hockey for the kid and i think he, at, at the end of it he was just kind of gassed i think he went back home to sweden hung out with the family as we saw on bear tracks hung out with pj axelson bruins absolute legend i think he had a great tournament what i liked most about his tournament is not necessarily his offensive point numbers, but just what he was able to do in the offensive zone, all right? There's going to be a lot of clips that I did post because he was just great on the forecheck, great on pucks, not afraid to get in the corners, which is good. Being able to create plays for other players, right? He's just an unbelievable playmaker. Um, I think the Bruins are going to give him a hard look to be on either the second or third line this season. Being 20 years old, obviously, is not going to hurt him to spend another year in Providence. I am going to do a video later on this week of just kind of Prospects to look out, obviously, as prospect you know, challenges come and gone, and now we're looking towards preseason. For me, Fabian Lizell was able to make great plays in the offensive zone. Wasn't shy in the neutral zone or in the defensive zone. He didn't look out of place, didn't look lackadaisical. The other players in the tournament, you know, he just looked like he was very invested in all areas of the ice. He even wore an A for, you know, for some of the games, which I thought was very neat. Like, there is a uh, YouTuber out there. I can't remember his name. If I do, I'll definitely shout it out or have Liv put it in here. You know, but he called Fabian Lizell the Swedish Roadrunner, and I absolutely love that nickname for him. I love giving out nicknames to players, and you know that 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 fits him perfectly. He has a motor that just does not stop. It doesn't matter if you turn the key off. It doesn't matter what you do. That motor will not shut off in Fabian Lizell. You know, he's very just addicted to the sport. He loves to play. And I just, I think very highly of him. I really hope that he has a chance in the preseason to make it to the big club. But obviously for me in the prospect challenge, he just very, very dominantly um, at, at moments, he was the fastest player on the ice. I definitely think he took advantage of this tournament to get more eyes on him from the Bruins camp. Obviously, like I said, not necessarily disappointing last season, but just not as high as I think himself and maybe others thought of him and just kind of dropped in the prospect rankings and just kind of dropped overall. I think this is going to be the Fabian Lysel Redemption Tour, and I am all in for it. Now, coming in at number one for me, this should not be a shocker to anybody. If you watched it, if you're on Twitter, whatever, this player was making headlines, getting reports from multiple media outlets. Matthew Patra. Matthew Patra took this tournament over, ladies and gentlemen. I have clips that are going to show you just... His ability on the forecheck, making great plays to get the puck off of his stick, making plays that make him a Bruins hockey player, okay? This player was all over the ice. There was not anybody who was going to stop him. It didn't matter if Zidane Chara was out there. He was going to get by him. He was going to run through him. It does not matter. He had Mamba mentality. He was unbelievable to watch. You know, for me, Matthew Potra, when he was drafted, a lot of people, almost like I said, Mason Lorai earlier, People are like, here we go, Don Sweeney again. Instead of you know trading to get that pick later on, picks him with the second overall pick when he could have been there later on. And his draft year in 68 games played, you know he only had 21 goals, 29 assists for 50 points. That doesn't scream exciting. That doesn't scream second round pick, especially when you're in the OHL. Bruins reached on him, and a lot of people were like, this is not a good pick. There are other players available that we should have drafted, or just trade back to get more picks. That again, more players that you can throw at the dartboard. Not a good pick. Matthew Potra saw that, he heard you, and he's been in your basement ever since, shooting pucks at washers and dryers. He heard everybody on Twitter, everybody in social media, everybody, he watches everybody's YouTube channel, and he was like, okay, all right, this, that's what you think of me, we'll watch this, right? In 63 games last season, so five less from his rookie year, his draft year, instead of 21 goals, he had 16. Pretty disappointing, Matthew. We were looking for more, and he's a bust. Oh, shit. Did you guys see the assist total? Because, you know, instead of those 29 assists like he had, he had 79. So, not 10, not 20, not 30, not 40. 50! Five fucking zero. Five zero. 50 more assists 
than he did the season prior. Are you kidding me? 95 points. Those 79 assists that he had was second in the OHL out of anybody. And there are players that are 21, 22 years old in the OHL that normally dominate versus these, you know, 17, 18, 19 year olds. So he put up 79 assists for second in the entire league and then dominated in the OHL playoffs. Guelph didn't get that far, which is the team he plays for, but he carried them, absolutely carried them, was the best player on the ice, dropped down his penalty minutes from 51 to 40. You know, those five games, we're not going to talk about it, but he may or may not have gotten suspended. But again, don't worry about it. But he, he has got that rugged game to him, and he's absolutely carving a path for himself to be on this team. He said in training camp, he's going to make this the most difficult decision for the Boston Bruins to send him back to juniors. He's not 20 years old yet, people. He's only 19. He can't play in Providence. He has to either play in the OHL or play in the NHL. Those are his only two options, and he's going to make it difficult. Do I think he's going to make it that difficult to where he's going to make it over guys like Lysel, Merkulov, Toporowski? Maybe not, but he's going to stick around. He's going to be in the preseason games, and the Bruins are going to give him a look. They're going to make sure that this is the right decision for him, and they're going to send him back if that's what they end up doing. But Matthew Patra is putting his career in his hands, and he's, he's annihilating it. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bruins make the playoffs this season for him to end up being in the playoffs if someone was to get hurt. Maybe a little Tyler Sagan impression. I, I am this highly on Matthew Patra. Do I think he's going to be first-line center next season and just absolutely dominate it, have a 20-year career, Jersey gets retired in the rafters, kissing babies, doing all these great things? Maybe not. Maybe not, okay? Do I think he's a future second-line center in the NHL? You're damn right I do. I think he's so good. I think he's a David Krejci replacement 1,000% with his absolute poise with the puck, able to play in all three zones, 176 pounds, but he plays like he's 200 pounds. He's, you know, once he hits that weight room, he, he's going to be unbelievable. I, I think for him almost... He's not even going to be focusing on scoring in the OHL. He's just going to be focused on putting muscle. The more muscle he puts on, the more of a chance he has to actually get called up next season when he does leave the OHL after season's end. But I really think that next season, when he's 20 years old, he's going to have a real chance to be in the NHL for the Boston Bruins, especially if he can capitalize on his 95-point season that he just had in Guelph. First star of the tournament, not even close. I'm going to show you guys kind of highlights now and just kind of going over what I think was great plays. So, you know, this isn't the end of the video. There are going to be um, highlights. And then after that, there might be some music that gets hit. We'll see. Absolute great tournament. You know, if you, if you have the time to be able to stream those uh, games, I would definitely recommend to. I don't, obviously it's a live stream, so I don't think you can go back and watch it. I don't know why they don't post it on YouTube when the stream's over with. You know, it's not like there's people cussing and copyright issues. There's nothing. There's no audio to the game. There's no announcers, commercials, breaks, nothing. It is just absolute hockey. And then once intermission, it's just a little screen that says intermission, essentially. So, like, you know, there, there's no reason why it can't be posted. It'd be nice if they posted it. They're starting to do broadcast it more than they have in years past, which... You know, it's good that it's evolving, but at the same time, I'm a hockey whore. I'd like to watch these videos again and again and again and just, you know, see if there's stuff that I've missed because there's obviously stuff that I've had to have missed. Unbelievable tournament. Can't wait for preseason. Bruins hockey is back, baby. Let's go. Hey, guys. So I completely forgot about Brett Harrison, which feels like a sin. So I am just going to kind of put a picture of him here and just talk about him real quick. Brett Harrison have an NHL shot that could be used currently right now and it would not miss a single shot. He has very good positioning on the ice. He knows exactly where he needs to be to help his team out, whether it's in the neutral zone, offensive zone, or defensive zone. I think he has the mindset and the maturity to play in the NHL. Right now it's more of just about filling out his frame and you know really just getting those games under his belt in the AHL. I think he's gonna spend this year in Providence, have a great season. Could even get a call up. Hopefully the e-bug doesn't hit us to where it's too bad this year. But I wouldn't mind seeing Brett Harrison in a couple of games. I do think he is a future part of this team. Probably fits in right there on that third line wing. I think third line in the future of Trent Frederick and Brett Harrison on it is a pretty good third line. Especially with uh, Harrison's shot and Frederick's ability to just be ferocious. So he 1000% had a great camp. I'm very proud of him. Can't wait to see what he brings in Providence. All right, guys, and now last bit here. So 
I'm gonna have some videos from the game that I screen grab myself. So with that being said, some of them are gonna be easier for me to kind of do like a play-by-play, -play, and some of them are gonna, just gonna be a little bit easier to kind of show you what I was seeing when I was watching the game and why I think this clip should be in there or why this play should be mentioned. Um, please don't kill me. I've never done play-by-play. -play. I've only done it playing NHL video games around the house to myself when I was younger. You know, never went to college for this stuff, so I'm not too comfortable doing this one, but I am gonna do it just because I'd rather have a little bit of talking than just posting a clip for the sake of a clip. So like I said, please don't kill me on this one. I will try to get better at it, but now let's get into it. Hall takes the puck, skates up through middle of the ice. Here comes Johnny Beecher now. Johnny Beecher taking the puck, going around. Stops, waits, gives it to Jackson Edward. Jackson Edward around the net, skate, skate, puck on net, puck on net. Curtis Hall in the middle and saved by goaltender. Edward takes the puck, offense his own. Sh shimmies, moves around, puck on net from Hall. Gets around to the Bruins player. Bruins, Bruins player moves. Edwards stays in the offensive zone. Skates, skates, gets to the middle. Puck on net. Whistle. Lorai over to Edward. Edward now moving it to Lysel. Lysel skating, skating in, getting in closer to the corner. Skating out. Lysel, top of the top of the key. Over now. That was bad. Ryan Mash shoots the puck in. Harrison bats at it. Toporowski takes it around, getting into the corner. It's a great possession. Moves it over. Put his mass in the middle. Mass makes a move. Brett Harrison cleans up the garbage. We got a Bruins goal. Patra over down. Brett Harrison. Lori with the puck. Great stick there by uh, Patra. Here comes a two on one. Jackson Edward now leaves back. Great positioning here by Edward. Puck over to Merkulov. Merkulov getting to the offensive zone. Passes over to Patra. Patra shot on net. Here comes Merkulov. Dancing, dancing, moving, quick shucking and jive. Get the puck on that net. Here comes Mason Lorai now trying to get in the offensive zone. And loses the puck. Lorai over to Lysel. Lysel waits, waits, moves, waits, waits, move. Puck poised with that puck. Keep on moving, shucking and jiving, trying to lose his defender. Great pass in front. Shot on goal. Beecher now, working in the offensive zone, getting that puck in that corner, what he needs to work on mostly, takes the body, keeps on working, working. Here comes Potra now, great stick by Potra there to break it up on the penalty kill. Harrison, Harrison skating, skating well, pass a little give and go, backhand, on net, save. Potra on the penalty kill, has three skaters coming towards him, waits, holds it, puts that puck right there in the middle to kill some time. Merkulov skating in the offensive zone, going around the net, makes, makes the referee jump. Lysel now working in the corner, helping him out. Merkulov getting in there with him. Defensive staying on right there on the point. Toporowski now getting in there. And here it comes again. Merkulov, Lysel fighting. Here comes Mason Lorai now in the offensive zone. Lorai with the puck behind the net. Here it comes all of a sudden now Toporowski's in there. Lorai's in there. They're all battling. Lysel's got the puck. Lysel takes it. Skates up to the top of the ice. Merkulov dancing around. Merkulov in the offensive zone. What a move by Merkulov. Into the slot, into the zone. Circles, waits, holds on to it. Making some moves, making some guys move. Here comes Jackson Edward now with the puck. Fabian Lysel skates, skates, continues on skating, passes it over now. Here comes Merkulov with the puck, loses it. Lorai helps him out, gets the puck back. Lorai loses the puck. I could never do this for a profession. Yeah, you could. Oh, what a dirty hit there by some player for Pittsburgh. Uh, Matthew Patra takes one up in the face. Now, I wonder how Patra's going to react to this. Patra staying on the ice now. Patra right there, 51 in black. Getting in there on the defensive zone, helping out. Takes the puck. Takes the puck. Skates. Bam! Wow, what a hit there by Matty Patra. Harrison now puts the puck around net. Patra takes puck, holds it. There he goes, moves it over. Freddie Brene now joining the play. Bang! Wow, what a goal by Brett Harrison. 72 in black. Lorai skates around. He's got the puck on his stick. Keeps the puck. 
Chips it in. Here goes Brett Harrison. Over to now Farinacci. Great stick over there. There we go. Brett Harrison skates into the zone. Skates in, holding. Patra takes the puck, helps him out. Patra holding the puck, skating. Skating. Wow, what a move. What a move. Skating. Whoa, he's in, he's in. Oh, what a save there by Montreal. <laughs> Thank you.